to the Bold Top by Joe podcast. Coming straight to you from the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona. Your society and culture podcast. And now, let's welcome your host, Joe. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. And uh, last week was a little bit of a strange week. I didn't have my normal upload due to the fact that I was having a little bit of computer issues, but that's all taken care of. And uh, also, my activity has been a little bit down on Twitter and social media due to the fact of my new position. If those For those that have been following the show, um, you guys know that I started a new position. So this position is very intense. You have to pay attention to detail. Um, it takes a lot of uh, it takes a lot of time, right? Driving around, you're constantly driving, so you have no signal. You can't even you can't even send messages because you're in the middle of nowhere, right? And then once you get to the location, you know you have to you, you can't just sit there and and be on the phone or any of that stuff, right? You have to you have to be focused. You have to be talking to the customers. You have to be doing all kinds of things, right? So I had a bunch of meetings. Uh, it's been nothing but uh, meetings and uh, getting together with the with the executives at work trying to figure out uh, a plan, right? A plan of action move for uh, for us to move forward. Usually when there is a uh, position like this or some positions where either the, the, the person that held this position last either leaves or quits or, or gets sick, you know, and, and just kind of leaves abruptly, it's 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 uh, one of those tough situations that you have to catch up, right? And you have no idea what they were working on, who they were talking to, what they were doing, right? Especially when they don't write notes down or, or save stuff in the computer or, or none of that. So it's been one of those things where we're trying to figure out what's going on, what what pieces are left there, what do we need to fix, what you know, who do we need to talk to, who are the main points of contact, all that kinds of stuff that comes with this position, right? So it's been a, it's been a little bit of hectic, like I said, lots of meetings, lots of lots of stuff going on. And lots of meets and greets and driving to different parts of the state. So uh, it's fun. It's it's a really fun job. It's rewarding. However, the first, I believe the first month is going to be like this, right? And once I uh, get settled in and I and I put everything in place, everything's gonna be everything's gonna be just fine, and I'll be back to my normal self. The time management's been very difficult due to the fact that I am on the road a lot, and uh, I thought about. I thought about podcasting on the road and taking my digital uh, recorder, but you know sometimes you have to pay attention to the road, right? You can't just be blabbing away. And um, my drives are pretty far; sometimes an hour and a half to two hours to get to one location. So I was like, "Nah, I'm not gonna chance it," you know. And uh, in this position, you really don't have a set lunch schedule or anything like that. You're like always on the go, so it's not it's not that easy to just kick back for 15 minutes and, and and record a podcast on the on the recorder you know and uh it's just there's a lot of stuff going on right there's just too much stuff going on but like i said everything everything's gonna be fine i'm gonna manage my time a little bit better once i get caught up at work and everything else and and uh, it's gonna be good right podcasting is very important however you all understand that uh we have to bring food to the table so you know you have you have to work right it's and it's the most important thing uh, no work, no money. You're kind of you're kind of screwed, right? So I have to uh, prioritize, right? I have to prioritize. So now I'm back, and uh, these uh, few episodes that I'm gonna roll out, I'm not going to do a whole lot of video ones. Um, I'm gonna stick with the audio, and once in a while, I'm gonna throw some some video podcasts out there, uh, just uh, so I can put them on YouTube and stuff like that. But other than that, everything's good. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, Everybody's doing good, and we're just you know working away, we're just working away, and, and and working hard, right? So I wanted to talk about a few subjects, a few things that I was researching, and uh, a few things that I've that I've been reading, right? When it comes to uh, our society, and one of them is uh, guns, uh, guns and teachers, right? Uh, some some schools, some states, they were talking about. Uh, you know, having teachers carry a weapon, right? And I talked about this subject a while ago. And uh, during the, you know, there was there's been some school shootings and all that kinds of stuff, right? So I talked about this uh, issue a while ago. And, 
you know, it's one of those touchy subjects that it's hard to it, it's hard to talk about because what is right and what is wrong, right? I think that in order to keep the kids safe, uh, we have to we have to close the campuses. You know, we have to close the campuses, and either you need a badge or you need a way to where people can just walk into places, right? I think that will be the first the first uh, step to sec- to secure a school, right? Without having to think about having guns in there uh, right away, and and I don't and like I said, I I like guns, right? I live in a state where it's open carry or concealed is fine, everything, right? It's it's kind of like a free for all here in Arizona, and you know, I I kind of you know I I carry myself, you know what I mean? I carry myself, and you know through the years. I've I think I've just gotten older and maybe a little softer, right? And um, I just uh, it would be a shame that I would have to use uh, that kinds of force on somebody. And uh, instead, I've been looking at you know buying a self defense taser and stuff like that. You know, maybe to incapacitate the person and stuff like that instead of uh, you know taking somebody's life, right? Because that's that is a hard thing to do, right? When you have to take somebody's life either because you're saving somebody's life or you're protecting your families or your own, right? And it's still, in the end, yes, you protect your family, you protect uh, somebody else if needed, but in the end, you're the one with that has to pull the trigger and you're the one that, uh, you know, eventually could kill somebody. And it, I'm sure it would be really hard to live with, with the fact that uh, you had to take somebody's life, right? Even though, you were defending yourself, it's, uh, it's still, I believe that it has to be very hard mentally on you, right? You can get in, you can lead, it can lead to depression, it can lead to all kinds of things, right? High anxiety. And uh, it's just not, uh, it's not just, it's not a good thing, right? So I've been, I've been thinking, I was like, man, maybe I should get a, instead of carrying a, a firearm, I should carry a, a taser that looks like a gun, right? And uh, maybe I can, maybe that's a lot safer if, if something was to happen and I happen to uh, have to use it, right? Just for the fact that it's just like, man, that's got to suck, man. It's, you know what I mean? It's just uh, um, taking somebody's life is hard. And, and when it comes to having uh, guns in school, I mean, that's that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's one of those hard things. I mean, is that teacher prepared to take somebody's life uh, walking in there? I mean, you're never going to be the same, right? So I believe the steps that we have to take for schools instead of... Uh, Having officers or having, I'm sorry, officers, having teachers carry guns. And I mean, you can train them, right? I have nothing against that. You can you can train your teachers for events like this, right? Events like events like school shootings and stuff like that. You know, you can, there is a lot of training when it comes to that. But I don't think that's the first, uh, that is the first thing we have to focus on. Like I said, we have to focus on security in school, right? Having... People just walk up to a school and start shooting, and it, that is not a good thing, right? That is not a good thing. So there's just the access is too easy for for people that want to just run into a school and do some crazy stuff. So we have to think about securing the schools first, right? And uh, I know some people are like, oh, against you know closed campuses and this and that. Oh, they're like prisons, and, and it's not. You know, you're securing your it's uh, it's security for your child. Right, I mean, you go to school to learn. You don't go to school to, to you know, hang out and and once in a while having some crazy ass person walk in there. Right, you go to school to learn, and um, people that shouldn't be in that school shouldn't be allowed in that school. Should it should be that simple? And uh, I believe that instead of going through all this process, the first thing we would do is secure it and close the campuses. Then, if you need to go into the school, there has to be a check in. Right, there has to be a check in where what are you doing here? What can I help you with? And uh, who are you picking up? And uh, let me see your ID and all that kinds of stuff before you let anybody in that school, right? Uh, even, even if you have to put a metal detector, even if you have to put a security guard where you can hire a security guard uh, when the main entrance of the school, right? So they can, so they, uh, whoever wants to go through there has to be, has to be checked. I mean, that's what has to be done, right? Um, once school's out and other than that, you know, that's a whole different story, right? But uh, when when school is in session, there shouldn't be anybody wandering the school. There shouldn't be anybody 
that can just walk in there and have full access to walk into classrooms and do all these kinds of things. And I think that should be our first uh, our first step to to uh, secure the children in schools, right? And uh, having security guards, having a closed campus. You know, maybe you can uh, maybe you could have a, a you know for fac- faculty. Obviously, you would need key cards and stuff like that, right, to get into the school and you know just securing it before we go into the gun issue. Uh, because once you start putting guns in schools, it's uh, it becomes a big issue, right? There's a lot of people that do not like guns. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of problems, and, and you know, in this country, when it comes to gun control, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of problems, right? Some people, uh, if you try to uh, do any, pass any kind of law when it comes to gun control, people freak out, and you know, they start making these crazy rallies and stuff like that. And and I get it, you know, nobody wants to lose the you know the right to bear arms and all this kinds of stuff you know the the people that are 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 uh, are gun owners and stuff like that right and yeah cuz there are you know used to to hunt or you know to protect yourself right like i said if there's any kind of a situation where uh, your family is in danger right and that is supposed to be uh the main purpose of having something in your house to protect yourself right a shotgun or something like that to protect from a home invasion or anything like that but you know school is a little different right i don't think that uh you know that we should have them in the school just yet unless you know until we we figure out a way to to secure our schools right it's not going to do anything all we're going to do is we're going to have shootouts if you just give teachers guns and you have people walking in there we're just going to have shootouts and there'll probably be more casualties because you're just shooting you know, what I mean, instead of just securing the campus, so you stop you stop that person from having the ability to walk in there at will, and uh, you know, it's if there's somebody that wants to create or, or do harm and walk into a school, well, they can't get in. They can't get into the school, and even if they walk, you know, they walk through the main entrance and they have to go through security, it's still they still would have to walk through security by that time. If something was to happen, the police could be called and. Uh, the fatalities and all that uh, could be w- would be a lot lower, right? Because by the time by the time this stuff starts starts to happen, you know, there's there's a chance where you can lock the classrooms and and take people to take the kids and teachers and to a safe location, right? And I think uh, schools need to be more aware and they need to make it a priority to protect the children and also have uh, plans, right? And that's when the teachers come come in, right? And instead of the gun issue thing, we should have teachers uh, take a take classes on uh, stuff like this. On when there is a uh, maybe what we should call it, you know, domestic terrorism, right? Because I mean, that's kind of what it is, right? You're you're terrorizing, and it's domestic, and you know, you're you're causing harm to uh, to children, to people here in this country, in the United States. So I think that classes like that. Uh, you know, there's tons of, of people that give classes out there for for uh, this kinds of situations, right? What do you do? What can you do? And not everybody's cut out to do it. Not everybody can do it. It's one of those things where, you know, not you know, people are gonna freak out when there's a situation like that. It's you know, it's really hard to keep calm and stay cool and think correctly because there's a lot of things going on around you, right? That you're that you're you're freaking out, right? You're freaking out because you're scared. You're scared. And you're afraid you're going to lose your life. You're afraid that somebody's going to hurt the children. So I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on right there, right? That you have to pick the right people, right? Maybe you can have a few people there that are trained uh, in these kinds of situations. Um, you know, maybe you can even hire you know ex cops, right, or, or cops that uh, that are retired that have uh, that have witnessed or have have been in this kind of situation before where they can assist and they can help and guide and then come out with a plan evacuation plan or a plan where uh they can keep uh they can keep the bad people out of the out of the school right and i was you know i was was reading the article and you know yeah i mean it's going to be hard to pass a loss like that it's going to be hard to have teachers walk in there with uh you know have have guns there you know i mean it's it's uh, it, it's tough, right? It's tough, and especially now with these kids, you know, there's there's a lot of weird stuff happening in schools. Uh, the kids are not respecting the teachers, and they're fighting each other. They're punching each other. 
you know, so it's like you don't want to have anything there where any of these kids that want to cause harm want to get their hands on, right? That you don't want to be like, oh, this teacher, we know they carry, so let's go try to find the gun. Or I mean, you want to limit any of that stuff. You don't want to, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to give anybody an option for them to look for something like that. So it's uh it's it's a tough it's a tough thing right it's a tough thing but you know we have to do we have to do something right we have to do something there's been a lot of school shootings and uh we have to do something when it comes to this stuff but like i said the kids are you know there's that's the other problem right the kids are are disruptive and they're i mean there was this video i was watching of those kids on the school bus and they let off a fire they let off some fireworks in the school bus i i don't know if you all have seen it but I mean, man, that's sad. I mean, because this 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 kid lets off this firework inside, and I mean, man, the, the driver could have lost control or something, or they could have been killed or somebody. I mean, I I didn't read the whole story if anybody was injured or burnt or anything. Um, I just saw the video and I was like, man, this is crazy. Like, this is this is insane. That you know, we need to check. We need to check. You know, what the heck are these kids bringing into the school? You know, that's another thing. It's like, we need to check. And, you know, I know people are going to be like, oh, well, you can't just check them. It, you know, you have to. This is a school. The school can say, hey, everybody has to walk in and check. We have to check your bags and, you know, all that stuff, right? You can't just let these kids come in here with fireworks and, and weapons. I mean, it's ridiculous, right, that we let, that it's a free-for-all. I, uh, I... I once went to a school that um, that the crime was a little bit that in that area, you know, there was a lot of uh, issues in the school, and when this when you walked in through the main gate, everybody had to walk through the main gate, through the main entrance, and there was uh, there was there was metal detectors, metal detectors, and it'll check your bag, just like if you're going into court, and uh, you'll walk in, you'll show your student ID, they'll you'll open your backpack. The security will look through your backpack. Hey, pencils, paper, this. All right, go ahead. You'll walk through the metal detector, and then off you go to your to your classroom, right? And, I mean, if, if that's something that you have to do in every school, yeah. I mean, if you were to walk in there and open the backpack, and you're like, why the hell do you have all these fireworks? No. You ain't getting in. You're not getting in. You're not getting into school with these fireworks. Now, again, yes, this could have happened in the morning when the school driver picks the kids up, and there's really nothing you can do about that. You can't just sit there and and try to check them all, right? Um, you you basically have to carry. You have to you have to take a uh, what you, maybe what you call a controller, right? It's another person that's on the school bus, and maybe you can check them, right? And but again, there's gonna be a lot of problems when it comes to that because people are parents are going to start complaining and why are you checking my son's bag and blah 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 and you know so it's uh you get into those gray areas those tough situations those 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 things that it's, they're hard to explain but you know at least you know if you pick up the kids and then you drop them off everybody has to go through one door and uh or a few doors right you can have a few a few entrances where they're being checked before they go into school and make sure there's no weapons, make sure there's no crazy things in there, drugs and fireworks and stupid things, right? I think that 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 should uh that should work, right? I mean, it's I don't know why nobody's thinking about any of this. I don't know why this stuff hasn't been done in schools. I mean, it just makes no sense. It doesn't matter if you go into a uh if you're in a school where you know, that's it's high end, right? Where it's like only the rich kids go. Like it doesn't matter. Like everybody should be treated the same everybody should be looked at checked at and and see what the heck you're bringing into school right you have the only thing you're allowed in school is your calculators your pencils your notebooks your laptop whatever the heck it is that that you're required for school that's the only thing that you should be able to bring right that's it your lunch bag that's it maybe Maybe we give all the kids everything they need in the school so they don't need to bring their, their backpacks. And all they have to do is bring their lunch bag. And all you got to do is check their lunch, right? And that's it. We provide the pencils, the paper, markers, everything. You don't have to worry about nothing. Everything's in the computer anyway. So here's your here's your backpack. The computer is your backpack. So here's your computer. Leave it, at, leave it, in, leave it on campus. Uh, and you have no reason to bring a bag, right? You have no reason to bring anything with you that you can uh, stash stuff inside there. 
And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking of ideas of, of what can we do, right? What can we do to limit all this stuff? And reading through the articles and I was like, man, I don't know about the gun thing yet. I mean, I, I think we need to, it'll be, it'll be better off if we secure the campuses and, uh, you know, we, we, we check, you know, that we check that we're proactive in checking and, and, uh, making sure the kids are, are safe, right? Yeah. No matter, no matter what school it is, no matter, no matter where you're at, I think that that's the first thing that should happen. And I think the government, instead of focusing so much on gun control and all this other stuff that they're focusing on and giving money away to different countries, well, they should give the monies to the school districts so the school districts can close these campuses up and, uh, you know, put some fencing, put some security, you know, get some some uh, some security for school hours. Uh, people that are trained, right? People that are trained for situations like now you can't get regular security guards. And I'm sorry, you know, you just can't. You need to get people that are trained in situations like this, right? That have gone through some kind of process because it's it's getting bad, right? It's getting really bad. So you can't just have just regular people out there, you know, like, for instance, myself go out there and, and apply for a security guard. You have to get people that are trained. Hey, did you take this class on, you know, on this? Did you take this course on you know, school shootings? Did you take this course on, uh, you know, hostage stuff or any, you know, just things that you're that you at least take a course. So things like this were to happen, you at least have an idea what you're supposed to do. You know, if you're just a regular security guard and you're like, screw this, man, I'm getting paid $15 an hour, screw that, I'm out of here. And that's it. The line of defense is gone. You know, the security guard runs for his life and the kids are in danger and the whole school is in danger and you're back to the same thing. Now you're paying somebody else that's not trained, that uh, is just looking for a job and uh, they're no good, right? So I think that security... In schools, you know, you have to have the right people, right? You have to have people that are trained, and you have to be able to pay them. You have to be able to pay them, you know, pretty good money, right, to protect your children. That's their job, right, is to make sure they're vigilant, make sure they're taking the right steps uh, when when things like this happen, right? Um, a lot of this stuff could could have been solved by uh, having close campuses and having security where, hey, where are you going? You know what I mean? Before this before these shooters reach the schools, man, you could stop them. You know, you could stop them before it gets even worse, right? Before you even have to have uh, all these shootings inside. So, you know, that's what I was thinking about. You know, that's that's what I was thinking about. I was, I was reading the article. I was like, I was like, man, we we definitely need to do a little bit more to um, to secure our schools in this country, and and uh, hopefully one day we have uh, we have uh, a a um we have a government or we have a uh we have a staff of of uh politicians that really take this serious and that they they want to give money and set aside money for school security for for to help the school districts in this country right so so this stuff like this could be minimized right and not everything's perfect right and I'm not talking about in the perfect world I'm just talking about security measures and uh, a way to a way to make it uh, a little bit safer, right? Make it safer for the for the children, especially for the little children, right? If you're going to start somewhere, you know, start with the little kids, right? Start with the elementaries and stuff like that. You know, kids that cannot defend themselves, that cannot run fast enough, you know, kids that are the most vulnerable, you know, usually when you're in high school, you lots of lots of young kids, they can, you know, hide and run or kind of defend themselves, right? But when you go to lo- those elementaries or or um, middle schools, I mean, these these kids are really, really, really small, right? And I mean, it's scary, right? So I mean, they they panic, they freak out, they don't know what to do, right? So it's it's tough, right? It's it's one of those tough situations. But I think that we should start with the little kids, you know, with the with the babies, um, because they don't stand a chance when something like this happens. When there's a shooting, where's the things like that, you know, the little kids stand no chance whatsoever, right? I mean, they there's nothing they can do. I mean, what are they gonna do? They can't defend themselves against a, a, a an adult with a weapon or a teenager with a weapon. I mean, they can't. I mean, they're little kids, right? So we're not giving them any chance at all when things like this happen. So I think start by uh, securing uh, elementaries, middle schools, all those all those uh, all those schools where there's a lot of little children. And securing them, closing them off. You're a parent. You, hey, what are you doing here? 
Okay, you, I'm here to pick up my son. Okay, let me see your ID. Let me check your bag. Okay, go ahead. Go to the office. Go pick up your son, right? Not just let some random person walk in here. I'm here to pick up my son, and this person starts shooting up the school. I mean, that's ridiculous, right, where people can just walk in there like that. So uh, those are my thoughts about that. Um, that's that's what I think about when... Um, when I when I read these these uh, these things, um, and I, I you know it's for me it's it's tough, right? You know, cause I still have little kids, and you know it's tough to to have to worry about is this is, is this gonna happen uh, to to one of my kids, right? Like I I think about it all the time, you know, and it's always in the back of my mind, like man, hopefully you know hopefully they're safe, right? Hopefully no crazy gets pissed off about something and wants to walk in there and shoot up a school or nothing like that, right? And and that goes through my mind a lot uh, because, like I said, I do have children. And uh, you as a parent um, should always, you know, think about that, right? Um, and, and you shouldn't, right? In, 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 rea- in all reality, you should not be thinking about that. It used to be where, you know, you know your kids are safe in school. And uh, in reality, you shouldn't be, as a parent, shouldn't be thinking about is is there's going to be some crazy stuff happening at school or school shooting or some kid letting off some fireworks in the school bus and the school bus rolling over. And I mean, you know what I mean? All this stuff. You shouldn't have to be thinking about these things. It should, the school should be, should have ways to secure and, and keep your child safe. So those are my thoughts. Those are, those are my thoughts. And, uh, you know, before I, before I take off, I'm going to give a, a few shout outs and, uh, you know, Willie and Fiona, thing thing about us podcast. Um, great, great show. You got Big Brother from Big Brother Advice and uh J Dot from What Is TWS Podcast, uh Chiquita from Chronicles of Virgo. Uh, there's tons of them. Uh, Ken and Mr. Gentleman. Uh, those are all great shows. There's I mean, there's tons of them. Whiskey Hell Podcast, you know, that's where I get all my news from. These guys are these guys are very informative. Um, there's tons and tons out there. If if I don't name you, um, just know that, you know, just know that, uh, you know, I love all of you guys. I love your shows, you know, and I'm going to try to do my best to put everybody in here. It's just there's too many, too many shows I listen to, too many, too many, right? Too many great shows out there. Uh, 12 Street Talk Back and all, you know, all, I mean, there's there's tons of them. There's tons of them and there's, there's still tons of podcasts a, a debt letter podcast my buddy frank he's a paranormal podcast scary story podcast it's a really good show if you're into scary stories and stuff like that it's it's awesome but uh yeah so i'm gonna try to get it you know get some more get some more people in you know get some more shout outs in my shows here you know once in a while i i, I forget i forget so when i'm uh, when i'm rolling when i'm when i'm recording i usually forget uh, man, who am I, I was supposed to, sh- you know, shout out somebody, and now I'm kind of now I'm writing them down. Who am I gonna shout out and stuff like that? That way I get the names right and all that. So um, yeah, so hopefully everybody's doing great, and uh, hopefully everybody's had a great weekend, and uh, stay safe. Until next time, peace. <laughs>